Another Proudly We Hail, one of radio's outstanding dramatic half-hours, starring Lee Tracy, and presented transcribed by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your star and host on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished Broadway stage, screen, and radio star, Lee Tracy. Thank you, Kenneth Banghart, and hello, everyone. Welcome again to Proudly We Hail. Our program today is a tale of international intrigue, unusual characters, a fatal train trip, and very important documents. I'll be back in a few moments after a word or two from Kent. The United States Army needs volunteers now. Young men and young women are needed for all types of jobs. Help keep your country strong. Enlist for active duty right away. Get full details from your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. Be a volunteer today. And now with your star, Lee Tracy, in the role of Hank Warren, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production of White Knight, Black Rook. <laughs> Simplon Orient Express is Europe's most famous train. Starting at Calais on the northern coast of France, it crosses the borders of no less than seven countries before it finishes its run at Istanbul. On this train ride, the famous and the infamous, the rich and the poor, people of many creeds, many beliefs, many occupations. Intrigue is often a passenger, and death has been known to share a compartment. Recently, both intrigue and death rode this crack express together. To while away the time, they played a game of chess. For pieces, they used their fellow passengers. One contestant on the side of intrigue carried information of a secret and dangerous nature. It was information of great value. This individual we shall call the White Knight. Also on the train were those on the side of death who sought to destroy the White Knight and take the information. These we shall call the Black Rook. Amidst them rode the kings, the queens, the pawns, as well as other knights and other rooks, all the pieces that go into a game of chess. This strange game began just before the Simplon Orient pulled out of Paris. Voilà, monsieur. Contact Mombay. I put the bag here, oui? Oui. Here you are. Uh, merci beaucoup, monsieur. Bon voyage. Thanks. Ah. Oh, brother. Something the matter? Oh, oh, no, excuse me. I didn't mean to stare at you like that. You're an American. You don't say. Well, so am I. You don't say. Well, it's just that I expected to find myself traveling with a lot of people who couldn't speak English. I was pleasantly surprised, that's all. <laughs> well, my name is Hank Warren. You're a pleasant surprise, too. What's your name, and why aren't you traveling in a first-class compartment? Oh, I couldn't afford it. And I thought it would be more fun like this. And my name is Gloria Ferguson. Gloria Ferguson... Graduated from college in June, and Papa gave her a trip to Europe as a present. <laughs> I don't know whether I should be flattered or not. Gloria Ferguson's school mom, who saved her pennies for three years so that she could give herself a trip to Europe. What about you? Hank Warren. Graduated from college in June, and Papa gave me a trip to Europe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I work over here. I, uh, I'm an international spy. Oh. Would you like a stick of uranium? <laughs> oh, gum, I'd love a stick. Now tell me, what do you do? Well, I'm one of those romantic and mysterious foreign correspondents <laughs> who's going to Venice for a much-needed vacation. Well, that's where I'm going. This may be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Say, do you suppose these other people know what we're talking about? Well, we'll ask them. Pardon, mademoiselle. Do you understand what we're talking about? <laughs> oui, I understand very well. <laughs> ah, thank you. Thank you. And uh, you, sir. I am the Baron Vladimir Heinrich von Hollenheld. Once upon a time, I would not have had to listen to the chattering of imbeciles, but uh, times have changed. Mm -hmm. The Baron understands. Thank you. And how about you, sir? One thing about you Americans always stands out, your bad manners. Well, Gloria, 
we've been formally introduced to our fellow passengers. And it seems that only Mademoiselle, uh, Mademoiselle... Mademoiselle Duval, Colette Duval, a very great actress on her way to Domodossola. We're pleased to meet you and find a kindred spirit. <laughs> and we're sure you're a very great actress indeed. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> well, the time has come. We go alone. Ooh. Well, well, Tavarich, you made that by the hair of your chinny chin chin. Yes, I did. But I made it. <laughs> Too dark to see much, and just dark enough for a cocktail and dinner. Oh, the countryside is so beautiful. Be even more so tomorrow when we get into the Alps. Oh, you don't know what a thrill this is for me. Ah, I have a strange, subtle effect on womankind. <laughs> Let's go have a drink. How about it, uh, Colette? You like to join us? Thank you, no, Monsieur. I shall wait for a little. Anybody else? What? Huh? Well, that's what I thought. Well, here we are. Diners up ahead. I think they're three of the sourest men I've ever seen. Well, Europeans don't have too much to be happy about these days, Chicky. Those three look like they'd cut your throat for a dime. For a nickel, they would. Cigarette? Mm, thanks. Golly, I'm full. Food's pretty good as far as we go. Pretty awful after that. You've been in Europe a long time, haven't you, Hank? Off and on since 39, mostly on. Well, look, lady, I'm on a vacation. Now, let's leave the ills of the world off of this trip. I'm sorry. It's just that I feel like someone who has come to enjoy herself and I have no right to. It's like I'm a, a well-fed spectator. Excuse at a... me, please. I wonder, could I join you? Oh, sure. Sit down. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't introduce myself in the compartment. Running for the train is not good for me, my heart. I am Dr. Carl Wieborg. Oh, I'm glad to know you, Doctor. Uh, this is Miss Ferguson, and I'm Hank Warren. Uh, it's a pleasure. As you've already eaten, but would you join me in the drink? Oh, thank you, but I'm just too full to think of it. I could stand a brandy. Excellent. Uh, garçon, le boisier for monsieur and the pernot for myself. Uh, you are Americans, of course. May I ask where you're going? Venice. You're married? <laughs> well, not quite. Just, uh, old friend. About four hours old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but of course. Uh, how charming. Venice is a beautiful city. Do you not dwell? I do. This is Miss Ferguson's first trip. Uh, you love it. Where are you bound for, Doctor? Uh, I must go on to Montfalcon. That is where I have my practice. Uh, the drinks. My pleasant journey to Mademoiselle and Monsieur. The very sight. I see that our other companions have come to dine. The woman seems very charming. She's quite a gal, just an actress. Yeah, that, that old guy by himself is Baron something or other. I don't know who that other pleasant character is. Well, I think his name is Pallet. Huh? I saw it on the passport when the conductor came around. But what's the matter, Dr. V. Borg? Is the drink that bad? Uh, oh, no, 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 I... I'm still uh, a little tired from running. Well, we'll be pulling into Dijon soon. We can get off and walk around if you like. Oh, yes, let's. You know, this is a big compartment without anybody in it. Yeah. But don't expect to sleep much tonight with everybody in it. <laughs> Where did that guy put my bag? I need some cigarettes. For it. Ah, here it is. Well, look. Well, what's the matter? Take a look. Hey, it's, it's all cut up inside. Who would want to... Where's your bag? Over here. You don't think that... Mine's been broken into, too, and it's all cut up. See what's missing. I'll have a look at the other baggage. I guess we got a thief on the what train. What an awful thing to do. This one's got the same kind of treatment. Well, everything seems to be here in mine. I don't have anything of any value in it anyway. Why should they cut the lining? It's as though someone was looking for something. The Baron's suitcase got it, too. Yeah. Here's another one. Uh, Are you looking for something, Mr. Warren? Yeah, someone's been playing games with our luggage. I was just checking to see if the others got the same treatment. I'll thank you to keep your hands off mine. Okay, Bob, keep your shirt on. Look at this. How do I know that isn't something that you and your friend didn't do? You know something 
I don't like you. Hank, there's nothing missing. I'll have a look at mine, and we'll get the conductor. This ripping was done with a sharp knife. Old Sherlock Holmes. Funny, I, I got a bunch of traveler's checks that haven't been touched, and when they leave cigarettes behind, that's screwy. <laughs> Let's get the conductor. I have already rung for him. Ah, good for you. But, hey, come in, old man. Have a look at this. Uh, oh, oh, sacre Dieu, name of a name. This is terrible, terrible. <laughs> more time have we before the train leaves? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, kid. What did you say? You're thinking about our suitcases being cut up, aren't you? Yeah. I'd say somebody is after something that somebody else has got, and they don't know where it is and who's got it. None of the other passengers had their luggage touched. They must think it's somebody in our compartment. <laughs> You're a very smart girl. Well, I think it's kind of exciting. Maybe you'll think this is exciting, too. Mm -hmm. Someone is following us. Oh, you're kidding. How do you know that? When we stopped to look at that church, I noticed someone standing across the street watching us. No, 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 no. Don't look now. We'll stop here and light a cigarette. You face me and look over my shoulder. You ready? Uh-huh. See him? I think so. There is somebody over there. Back away. It's dark to see who. Isn't this an awfully deserted street? Uh, this time of night. Most of the streets are pretty empty. We must get back to the train, Hank. Well, we're headed there right now. When we come to the next corner, you keep going. Now, don't run. I'll wait and see who our friend oh, is. No, that might be dangerous. Why don't we both run for all we're worth? <laughs> War and pride. Might be nobody after all. Well, I think you're crazy. Okay, now, here we go. You keep moving. I'm going to cross the street. But suppose something happens. What'll I do? Get back to the train and get help. Go on now. All right. You looking for somebody, Jack? Uh, hey! Hey, you! Come back here! Oh, oh. Hey, Hank, are you all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm all right. I'm not so hot as a sleuth, what though. What happened? Did you see who it was? No. He popped me before I could see anything. It's too dark, I guess. Give me a hand, will you? Yeah. I seem to be stuck to something. Oh, well, oh... No wonder. What is it? Uh, just this. Had me pinned by the shoulder of my coat to the wood there. What a horrible-looking knife. Oh. I'm glad whoever threw it was off his aim tonight. Hank, oh, you're serious. You might have been killed. Somebody around here is playing for keeps. But why they're playing with me, I don't know. This is probably the little toy that was used on the suitcases. You think it might be somebody in our compartment? I wouldn't be a bit surprised, honey. We won't say anything about this now. All right, but I'm getting scared. Me too. Come on, let's get back to the train. Lee Tracy starring in the role of Hank Warren in the proudly we hail production of White Knight, Black Rook. will return for the second act in just a moment. But first, a word to men with training in communications and electronics. The man with a radio is just as essential as the man with a gun. It takes both to make a real fighting team. The communications man is right up front with a fighting man, sending information and giving directions by radio and telephone. If you're skilled in communications and electronics, you're vitally needed by the United States Army today. In the United States Army, you can serve your country to the best of your ability, and at the same time, learn all about the most up-to-date equipment and techniques in your field. So visit your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station and find out how you can help. Get on the Army team. Join the United States Army today. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now with your star, Lee Tracy, in the role of Hank Warren, we present the second act of White Knight, Black Rook. On through the night, heading south and east, roars the Simpon Orient. On board, the game of chess grows more critical, the players more judicious and careful in their respective moves. White Knight to White Bishop Three, Black Rook to Black King's Pawn. Uh, anybody feel like a game of rugby? <laughs> no? Well, how about bridge? 
I get a little tired of things for Mr. Lawrence. This is a game I have never played. But I would let you buy me a drink? Well, things are looking up. Gloria, how about you? But perhaps Mademoiselle would rather rest. No, Mademoiselle can rest any time. Let's make it a party. Baron? Young man, is Baron Vladimir Heinz? Oh, now, now, now. Come on, Baron. Climb down off your title and have a little fun with it. <laughs> Come on, it'll do you good. Uh, well, it is very unusual. I don't often do this sort of thing, but since you insist... That's the old stuff, Baron. Ah, how about you, Palak? How did you know my name? Oh, I know all about you, Palak. You like to walk at night. I wouldn't be surprised if knife throwing wasn't one of your hobbies. What are you talking about? Skip it. Come on, folks. Let's go wassle. Sure you won't change your mind, doctor? Uh, no, no, thank you. Dr. Viborg, eh? Please? Dr. Carl Viborg of Monfellic <laughs> That's a laugh. Is it? Mr. Pollock? I thought perhaps the American was in it with you, but in checking, I find that you are all alone, Mr. Anadolf of Sophia. You don't make much sense. Perhaps this does. A gun never made sense. Indeed, we shall see. You thought you had given us the slip, run for the west and double back like the fox. Throw off the scent. Oh, no. I don't know what you're talking about. I wasn't sure until we reached Dijon, and we had a chance to make a telephone call. Now everything fits. We don't have the time to get the information we want out of your head, but to see that you do not deliver it, we are prepared to take certain steps. Wasn't it childish, cutting up the bag? Very. I have a childish companion who likes to make sure of everything. Now we are going for a little walk. If you make one sound, I shall shoot. I'm quite willing to take my chances after that. Of course, should you give me what I want, I might forget to kill you. No, I'll give you nothing. All right. Open the door. Walk to the end of the corridor. We shall have a cigarette where the car is joined. A last cigarette. <laughs> yeah, go on. So the Countess said to me, Baron, you are a good man. And if I was 20 years younger, I'd marry you myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Baron, you're a man after my own heart. I think you're wonderful. You <laughs> should be on the stage with me. We would make a great team, no? Uh, <laughs> perhaps if I had been born an extra instead of a Baron, I might have been... Yeah. <laughs> what happened? Hey, what's going on? Please, please, please. Hey, conductor, what did we hit? Please, did we hit something? Please. Please, but, 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 Monsieur, but, I have no time now. We eat nothing. Ah, oh. oh, come on. Here, here. Maybe this will slow you down for a second. Now, what happened? A man fell off the train. Oh, awful. Is he hurt badly? I'm afraid he's more than hurt. He, uh, he had the misfortune to fall under the wheel. Oh, Somebody no. pulled the emergency cord, huh? Yes, correct, Monsieur. Uh, Dr. Wieberg, there was a whole thing happened. It was he who pulled the cord. Can't you sleep? No, I keep thinking about that poor man. Alec, I'm not thinking so much about him as I am about our friend Dr. Viborg. What do you mean? Pretty hard to fall off a train. How did Viborg see it happen? Well, he told the police. Yeah, but... yeah, yeah, I know. First the bags, then the... Business in Dijon. Now, Palik falls off the train. What did the police say when you told them? Oh, <laughs> they took it all down. Please, I'm finding it difficult enough as it is to get some sleep. I'm going out in the car to first smoke. You want to come? Oh, no, thanks. I'm dead. Well, try and sleep. It'll be daylight soon. Mr. Vaughn? Oh. Oh, I, I wondered how you could sleep. Please, there isn't much time. I wasn't asleep, and I have good ears, and I know what you think. Now what happened? Do I fall off the train, too? Keep your voice down. You've got to believe me. Pollock was going to kill me. He was too sure of himself, and I managed to turn the table. <laughs> Some table turning. Don't interrupt me, and please try to get it through your stupid head that I would not be taking you into my confidence like this if I did not think it absolutely necessary. I must trust someone. How do you know you can trust me? Henry Warren, Allied Press. I know you from your writing, and I've seen your picture. 
Now, will you please stop asking silly questions and listen? Never mind who I am or what I am. I have information that, let us say, a friendly government wants and needs. It is just important to others to keep me from delivering it. If they cannot get the information from me, they'll kill me just so I can pass it on. Pollock was one of them. And I'm sure from what he said, there's another one of them in our compartment. The Baron? I don't know. Pollock failed to kill me, but his accomplice will try and may succeed. Couldn't Pollock have taken this information from you? What I know, I carry here in my head. Where do I come into it? After the uh, accident, I wrote a letter. It is in code. I want you to deliver for me just in case. You will leave it to this men at the legation. This is the address. It is where you are going anyway. Would you tell me what this information concerns? <laughs> Remember now, I'm a newspaper man. This is not for newspapers. It concerns the names of key members of an underground movement in a certain country. It is as much as I can say. What happens if you get through all right? I'll be getting off soon. If I do get through, I'll send you a telegram. It will say, the sun is rising. If you do not hear from me before you leave the train, then you must deliver this letter. Will you do it? Yes, I'll do it. But I got a feeling somebody thinks that I've got something to do with this already. Pollock did at first. He said they checked in Dijon. You're not suspected now. Well, I hope you're right. All right, uh, deal me in. I always did like poker. We'll be stopping at Domodossola soon, won't we, Hank? Yep. Isn't that where you leave us, Colette? Oui. Despite all the unpleasantness, it's been very nice meeting you. Why do you not stay over and come see me at the theater? Oh, I wish we could, but now we got to go on. No, oh, that is too bad. Baron, what about you? Domodossola is where I'm getting off also, and if you'll procure a ticket for me, I shall be most happy to come and see you perform. Indeed. Are you leaving us too, Baron? I'm sorry, but I must. I have a cousin who is going to have me for a guest. It will be a big surprise to him. <laughs> oh, I've been asleep. What time is it? Time to wake up. <laughs> you sleep very nicely. Don't snore or anything. <laughs> what happened to Dr. Zeeborg? He got off at some whistle stop after he, we left uh, Dimodosola. But I thought he said he was going to Morfocon. Well, I guess he changed his mind. That must have been some kind of strange coincidence, don't you think? Yeah. How do you like this big compartment all to ourselves? <laughs> I should blush. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll probably pick up some friends in Milan. Oh, I certainly needed that sleep. I feel much better. What time is it? Well, about uh, 11.30. Oh, well, no wonder I'm so hungry. Is it too late to get something to eat? I ordered some sandwiches. Didn't know when you'd wake up. Oh, Hank Warren, you're a thoughtful man. Oh, I have all kinds of talents. <laughs> I even sometimes... Uh, you look so strange with your mouth open. Well, this is a bit of a surprise. But you got <laughs> off the train. I just could not resist your charming company, so I got back on again. Another car, of course. I don't understand. Mr. Warren does. Doesn't he? Please, the letter quickly. You don't want me, baby. <laughs> you probably want the good doctor. He got off long ago. I know all about that. The doctor is in good hands by now. Now, give me the letter. I saw him give it to you last night. <laughs> that surprises you. I am just full of surprises, shall you? Give it to me. Sorry, I don't read you. Give me the letter, Mr. Warren, unless you want me to shoot your friend. Oh, I don't think you'd do that, Colette. You don't want to hang. Then I will show you. Hank, she means it. These two women understand each other. For the last time, will you give me that letter? Say one word and I shoot. What is it? Telegram for Signor Henry Warren. It's arrived at the last stop. Thank you very much. I will give it to Monsieur Warren. But Signora, I will open it for you. <laughs> Your drug. The sun is rising. What does that mean? Ah, it means Colette, old kid, that V-Boy gave your friends the slip and got the home plate safely. 
It means that you can close your mouth now and put away that gun. I don't believe it. <laughs> Life is real. Life is earnest. Just to show you how much I believe it, here's the letter V-Boy gave me in case he what? didn't make it. And since he did, I give it to you as a token of our appreciation for being such a wonderful actor. <laughs> I guess it can't be worth much now. <laughs> Thank you so much. A most pleasant journey to you both. Why, why did you give her that? Because she thought it was a code list of the names of some underground people. Who well, wasn't it? What do you take me for, woman? That was just a lot of gibberish that I wrote down on a paper and put in the right envelope. The paper she wanted is in your purse. What? Thank Juan, I think you are an international spy. Now, will you please tell me what this is all about? Sure. But, wait a minute. Have a, have a stick of uranium first. <laughs> now, where... The game of chess was over for the time being. The white knight would play again. A black rook had fallen, but there were others to take his place. At Milan, intrigue and death left the Simplon Orient Express. The game would go on elsewhere. Our star, Lee Tracy, will return with a word about next week's show, but first, a word about freedom. In this great country of ours, freedom is not just a word, it's a fact. And all of us must help preserve it. The young men and young women who volunteer and wear the uniform of the United States Army are helping to keep freedom a fact. The moment you put on the United States Army uniform, everyone knows that you're an active member in the fight for freedom. So visit your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. Get all the details on how you can serve yourself and your country in these critical times. Get on the Army team. Be a volunteer today. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented in cooperation with this station by your Army and your Air Force. Proudly We Hail stars Lee Tracy. White Knight Black Rook was written by DeWitt Cop. The music was composed and conducted by John Guaneri. Proudly We Hail is directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking, and here again is your host and star, Lee Tracy. Next week, join me on an ocean freighter, pounded by a lashing hurricane and captained by a madman in a gripping play called The Dark Sea. Goodbye.